open it. I'll open them back up. Okay, so let's do this one. Uh, it says consider the following reaction. The cool thing is it's already balanced for you, everything. It asks, is this a redox or non-redox reaction? It's real easy to figure it out because elements that are uncombined with anything else, like aluminum here or fluorine here, fluorine is uncombined with another type of element, mm -hmm. those are always zero oxidation state, okay? Anything that's uncombined. Here we've got something that's combined, right? So its oxidation state is going to be different, okay? Oh, okay. Um, group uh, halogens, group mm -hmm. sevens, are always negative, are not always, fluorine is always negative one. Mm -hmm. Aluminum's always plus three, okay? The, the oxidation number is the same thing as the charge effectively, okay. okay? Sometimes you'll see like the bigger halogens change their oxidation number, like chlorine, um, iodine, things like that. But fluorine one. So that has too an small. oxidation number of, of negative, negative two. one. Negative, negative one. one. Yeah. Oh, because there's two. There's three of them. Right. Oh, okay. Right. So what you effectively are doing is breaking that up into you know what their formal charges would be. You know. So you say aluminum is well, fluorine is always going to be minus one and aluminum is always going to be plus three, right? So you're kind of doing what we were doing with the net ionic and total ionic equation if you want to think about it that way, but not necessarily, you know? So that's how you figure out what the oxidation numbers of these things are, okay? So um, aluminum fluoride has different oxidation numbers than aluminum and fluorine, so yes, the oxidation numbers change, so it's a redox reaction. That's how you know. So if the oxidation numbers change, it's a redox reaction. Um, Name the reaction type. It's a decomposition, right? Yeah. Because you go from one thing to two things, and then do I had you to can do those. the? <laughs> yeah, that's can you can do the moles, the grams to moles thing. Yes, but I was confused. Should we do it? Yeah. Okay, so that's you always get your conversion factors from your reaction equation, the coefficient. Oh, we're still using the same. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So well, that just, makes sense. Let's just do the the thing. Okay. It says, if 64 grams of aluminum fluoride react, how many moles of fluorine will be formed? So aluminum fluoride, 64 grams, so the number of moles of aluminum fluoride is going to be 64.0 grams, and then you're going to multiply that by the inverse of the molar mass of aluminum fluoride, and thank goodness it's all added up for me. 83.98. Grams per one mole. Uh, cancel, cancel. That gives you the number of moles, right? And in this case, um, to three sig figs, it's going to be 0 0.762 moles of aluminum fluoride. And then uh, it asks how many moles of fluorine will be formed? Well, the number of moles of fluorine. You use that number of moles of aluminum fluoride, and you know there's a 2 to 3 ratio, and that's that conversion factor that you get from the uh, reaction equation. So it's going to be 0 0.762 moles ALF3. Multiply that by uh, 2 moles ALF3 on the bottom, 3 moles F2. Cancel. Cancel. Uh, 0.762 times 3 divided by 2 equals 1.14 moles. Okay. Makes sense? I, now that I know that we were using the same. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah. So all of those things, I have like a lot of those where it's like keep doing the same thing, you know?